In this tutorial, we're going to teach you how to set up character swapping like in the LEGO games. For our project, we're using the Low Poly Simple Nature Pack and a simple third person movement script. The first thing that we're going to do is create a new C -sharp script and we're going to call it Character Swap. Then, once we've opened it up in Visual Studio, we're going to create a public transform and we're going to call it Character. And then we're going to create a public list of transforms and call it Possible Characters. Now, to set up functionality, go into the update function and put if input.getKeyDown keycode Q and then beneath that, do the same thing except key code E. This will be our input for our character swapping. In order for this to work, we're going to have to go back up to the top and type out public int and call it which character. Then in our first if statement, we'll make another if statement. And it's going to say if which character is equal to zero, then which character equals possible characters dot count. And this is important. Make sure you put down minus one. Then we're going to type out an else statement and we're going to say which character minus equals one. Copy and paste that into our latter if statement and then switch out the possible characters dot count minus one with our zero. Then go to the else statement, and instead of saying minus equals one, make it plus equals one. And now we can cycle through all of our characters that we can swap with. Leaving our update function, let's make a public void, and we're going to call it swap. Then let's have our swap function invoked after both of our else statements. Then inside of our swap function, we're going to say character is equal to possible characters, and in square brackets, say which character. Beneath that, type character.getComponent, and then we're just going to type in our third person movement script, parentheses dot enabled is equal to true. Then we're going to use a for loop in order to turn off all the other characters movement scripts, which as usual, I pulled from the internet. Change it from num enemies to possible characters dot count. Then in the for loop, we're going to say if possible characters at position I is not equal to character, then possible characters at position I dot get component third person movement parentheses dot enabled equals false. Finally, just for a bit of safety netting, let's go up to our start function and say if character is equal to null and possible characters dot count is greater than or equal to one, then character equals possible characters at position zero. Beneath that, let's go ahead and invoke our swap function. Save that and let's go back into our editor. Now we have a game manager here, so let's go ahead and drag and drop our script onto it. Lock our inspector. Then we're going to highlight all three of our possible characters and drag and drop them into the possible characters list. Now let's test this out in play mode and it works great. As you can see, only our highlighted character moves, but we haven't set up the camera to follow him. So let's go ahead and fix that. For our project, we're gonna use the virtual camera from Cinemachine, but it's the same principles for whatever camera follow script you decide to use. And whenever we use our swap function, we're gonna change the follow and look at variables of our Cinemachine camera. In our script, type out using Cinemachine make a public Cinemachine virtual camera variable. We're gonna call ours cam. Then we're gonna go into the bottom of our swap function. And we're gonna say cam.lookat equals character and cam.follow also equals character. Go ahead and save that and we're ready to test this out in play mode. All right, now that works, but I also want an indicator of when we switch and I don't want the character to be able to get too far and still be able to switch. Now we're going to use a particle system that we actually already have inside of our editor. So heading back into Visual Studio, we're going to go up to the top and we're going to make a public particle system, just call it M particle system. Then beneath the second line of our swap function, we're going to say M particle system dot transform dot position equals character dot position. Beneath that, we're going to say M particle system dot play. Now beneath our else statement, we're going to say if vector3 dot distance parentheses possible characters at position which character dot position comma character dot position is greater than five. And in order to finish this, we're going to go back up to the top and make an int and call it wc. And then we're going to go above both of our if which character statements and we're going to say wc is equal to which character. Then inside of our if vector3 statement, which checks to see if the character is too far away, we're going to say which character is equal to WC, after which we're going to hit return, that way we don't ever swap. To make sure this is working right, we'll go above that and we'll say debug.log and feed it the parameter of too far, go into our swap function and say debug.log close enough. Then go ahead and copy our if vector 3 statement into the other if input statement, and then we can go ahead and save this and test it out. And there you go, particles work great. And then if we get too far away, as you can see, it says too far. All right, last thing we need to do is remove those debug.log statements, save that, and then you're done. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them down in the comments. We try to answer as many as possible, and we'll see you next time.